All right, looking at calculus section one of chapter one, starting off with mostly review stuff here in our calculus class. So uh, starting off with real numbers, which are obviously numbers that are not imaginary, uh, not going in too much detail with those functions and graphs. So let's start off. A lot of this stuff's gonna be more notation and um, how things are gonna be written and using more of that formal uh, mathematics. So uh, intervals. So when we're dealing with intervals um, and writing an interval, so when something's increasing or decreasing, we're going to write it. It's kind of going to look like a coordinate, um, an xy coordinate. Uh, but there's two different ways of doing it. One is with the blocked, um, with the blocks, which is uh, the block AB, uh, which is the same as saying that the x is an interval from A to B, including A and B. So when we're dealing with these intervals and we have um, AB, uh, we know we were starting and ending. If we're including those numbers, um, we're going to use the block to say that they're included. Um, if we don't include them, so if we're saying they're approaching those numbers but not actually touching them, uh, we're just going to use the normal parentheses. So the parentheses AB would be saying that the X values are from A to B but not including A to B. Uh, and X is somewhere between them. Uh, you can do the same thing with y and uh, anytime you're talking about your intervals with your domain or your range. Uh, one thing I do want to point out is that if you ever have an infinity, so either positive infinity or negative infinity, those are never included because infinity is kind of an idea of the numbers going on forever and it's not an actual number. So anytime you have going off into infinity in one direction, um, it's always going to be the open, okay, so the bottom one. It's going to be an open parenthesis or it's going to be an opened um, interval, not a closed interval. The top one is our closed, the bottom one is our open. Okay, another thing you want to remember is your distance formula. Whenever we're dealing with trying to find the distance of stuff, again, review, uh, d is equal to the square root of x squared minus, or x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And so you take the difference of the x values, difference of the y values, square them, add them, square root them, uh, ends up getting your, uh, what you're basically doing here is that you're basically making a, uh, a Pythagorean theorem is uh, what it's based off of. So it's, it's basically doing the Pythagorean theorem. You're making a right triangle to solve it. So take a second, find the distance um, between these two points, 4, 2, and negative 3, 6. Okay. Hopefully you got an answer of about square root of 65, I believe, which is about 8.062. So um, uh, with this, we usually want to start keeping stuff in more of the exact terms uh, in this class. Um, and we'll talk about some of the, for the AP exam, just some of the uh, notation stuff that you can do. You don't have to go into um, as detailed as uh, you have in the past for some of that stuff. Okay, so function. So function is when every domain value or x value has only one range value or y value. So for every input, there's only one output that makes it a function. And uh, not every um, graph is going to be a function. Uh, easy one to um, know of would be a plus or minus square root of x. Uh, that's kind of your sideways parabola. And that's not going to be a uh, that's not going to be a function because for one input, one x value, you could have two different y values. Square root of 14 could be plus or minus four. Um, that's not a function. But a lot of different functions or a lot of different graphs you're going to see will be functions uh, for that. Um, your polynomials, your linears, all those are functions. The uh, quadratics. Uh, okay, so. Uh, zeros and roots. So whenever we're talking about zeros and roots, they are the exact same when we're talking about it in a function. So um, they are where the uh, the graph or the equation crosses the x-axis. So it's where the y value is zero. So anytime you're asking for what's the zeros or roots of it, you're basically asking where does it cross the x-axis? What's the x-intercepts of this function? Not every function is going to have an x-intercept of x squared plus 2. Uh, won't have the zero because it won't cross the x-axis. Um, any polynomial with an, a starting odd 
or an odd degree, I guess. Any polynomial with an odd degree, so the largest exponent is odd, will always have at least one root. Um, evens um, will not, okay? Um, they won't always have it. Sometimes they will, but not always. But if there's an odd, if it's the degree of it is odd, then um, it will always have at least one root. But that's what roots and zeros are. So if you're ever asked what's the root or zeros of a function, you're basically asking where does it cross the x-axis. And so on this graph, you can look at it visually. Um, other times you could do it with uh, uh, mathematically, you know, solving, setting it equal to zero and solving. Uh, increasing and decreasing. Okay, so when a function is increasing from a to b, okay, uh, that's what this is starting off saying. It's saying increasing on interval a, b is if the f of x1 is less than f of x2 for all x1, x2 are elements of a, b, uh, such that x1, x2, x1 is less than x2. Basically what this is saying is that over a given interval, whatever it is, if you pick a x value, if you pick two x values within that interval, the smaller x value should have the smaller y value. And then the larger x value should have the larger x value, or y value. That means it's increasing. It makes more sense if you just think about it. Is the graph going up or down? As the x increases, does the y increase? That is an increasing graph. The second one, it decreases on a to b, the interval a to b. If f of x1 is greater than f of x2 for all, x1, x2 are elements of a, b, such that x1 is less than um, x2. So this is just saying that as your x's increase over a given interval, do the y's decrease. Okay, so as the x's get bigger, do the y's get smaller. Again, a lot of the stuff in calculus, you're going to see some of this uh, element stuff and um, different notations of things that you haven't seen before. Okay. All right, even odd. So an even function, um, so functions could be even, odd, or neither. Um, so an even function, they are symmetrical around the y-axis. So if you have any graph that is symmetrical around the y-axis, it ends up being an even function. y equals x squared is an easy one of this. Um, an even function, basically, if you take the x value and you change it from positive to negative, but the y value doesn't change, that means it's an even function. Okay, And so we have an example here, that top one. Um, as you see, you can kind of fold it over the y-axis, and it's going to be the exact same function. The uh, odd functions are symmetrical around the origin. So as you plug in a negative x value, you should get a negative y value, or the opposite of it. So if I plug in an, an x of 3 and I get a 4, when I plug in a negative 3, I should get a negative 4. Um, that makes it symmetrical around the y-axis. y equals x. Um, is an easy one. Sine x is an easy one. Um, those are symmetrical around the origin. We mean they're odd. So um, yeah, so that's an odd function. That's your even and your odd functions. Okay, and you could also have a function that's neither of them. Um, y equals three x plus four is not even or odd. Okay. All right. So that's the end of this first section. Um, here's all the stuff. Make sure you're using the Early Transcendental book uh, for this. Uh, if it's not the Early Transcendental, then the page numbers might be wrong. So um, let's make sure you're looking at that. That's was section uh, one.